Hello again. I really don't mean to pick on the BBC. I know I already poked a little fun at them earlier today, but I've been looking at part of their website which explains how to be an ally and also helpfully explains why you should be ashamed of yourself if you're a white heterosexual male who presents as the same gender he was assigned at birth. I feel embarrassed even to admit out loud that I find myself in this particular category. There is also a useful guide to the seven different types of ally, about whom I suspect most viewers will be terribly ignorant, as indeed I was, until the BBC educated me. One of these ally types sounds particularly loathsome. This is somebody the, who's described as the upstander. Hmm. It's somebody who shuts down reports and pushes back on hearing inappropriate jokes, even if no one's hurt by them. <laughs> he must be a right barrel of laughs to work with. Just the type of fellow one would want to chat to by the water cooler. <clears throat> yes, another type of ally is the champion. He or she sends out a powerful message by voluntarily deferring to colleagues from underrepresented groups in meetings, events and conferences. Well, all very well, of course, if this colleague from an underrepresented group has something useful or sensible to say. What though if, despite being a black homosexual, he happens to be a gibbering idiot? Am I still to voluntarily defer to him at meetings? More research needed on that particular idea, I fancy. The game called Ally Track, which you can find um, above, is designed to measure your privilege, and I found it absolutely fascinating. It asks questions such as whether you felt discriminated against because of your religion. The answer to that is, of course, that I have not, because I don't make a song and dance about my religion, it being a personal matter between me and the Lord. I can't imagine mentioning it in my workplace or socially. I've worked and had friends uh, who are devout Hindus and Sikhs, and they adopt precisely the same approach simply getting on with their own religion and not shouting about it. This question really refers to only one religion, of course, and I'm sure the viewers know which one it is. <laughs> Have I ever been shamed for my sexual orientation? Again, I don't discuss my sex life with anybody. Why would I? Other people's sex lives are not really all that interesting anyway. I'm bound to say that the only person I ever worked with who was constantly banging on about his sex life and his exotic sexual tastes was a gay guy who talked a lot about rimming and fisting. It's true that people raise their eyebrows at this, but I have an idea that if I gave a blow-by-blow -blow account of what my wife and I got up to in the sack, there would be a similar reaction. I urge viewers to click on the link which I give in the description to this video and look around this strange site for themselves. It really tells you a great deal about the BBC.